Ashtanga is a very classic form, and this class is eventually going to be called Samasa Vinyasa Flow. And we'll still honor the lineage that came from Krishnamacharya, but the man who formed the Ashtanga practice has been discovered to have been inappropriate with many women. So if you see the name of the class changing on the schedule, it's the same class. We will still be practicing a vinyasa flow like we do in this class, but we already bring our own special form of somatic warming up, invitation to listen to your body, and a breaking down of, of some more complex poses into warming up pieces. And that's not classically done in the classical Ashtanga system as developed by Patabi Joyce. And so today is about recording some history as we begin to change that. So thank you for being here this morning. Moving down through the soles of the feet, one again. And the feet are directly underneath the hip joint. So it may feel a little closer or a little further apart than you're used to. And the toes are opening up wide. Shoulders are moving back and down. And we tuck the chin in just slightly to lengthen the back of the neck. And let your eyes close softly and let the intention turn inward. I may come over and invite some adjustment. Just relax for a second. If I come over and maybe adjust some things, I'm going to put my toe by your heel. Bring your toe to my heel. Yeah, let's see if we can do the same on that foot. Yeah. Awesome. And it might feel awkward at first in the adjustment of the feet, the neck and the shoulders. But invite your body into optimal alignment this morning. as you become aware of the breath and the body, noticing how you're feeling today. Notice what's going on with you. What did it take to get here this morning and be on time? <laughs> noticing without judgment, without criticism, just noticing and when you're ready, with each breath, allowing the breath to become a little bit deeper, a little bit fuller. And we begin the complete yoga breath, inhaling abdomen, chest, collar, exhaling collar, chest, abdomen. At your own pace, inhaling from the bottom up and exhaling from the top down. We inhale until it feels as if there's no room left for breath, right to the back of the throat and the nose. And we exhale until there is nothing left inside, until you feel completely empty. Inhaling completely, exhaling completely. Each breath an invitation to be right here, right now. Continuing with the complete breath, we layer that with ujjayi, the ocean breath. The inhalation takes on a slight awe aspiration. The exhalation takes on a slight e aspiration. I'm exaggerating the sound so that you can hear it. So experiment with it. And the, technically, we're trying to get the epiglottis to vibrate gently over the esophagus. So it's a gentle contraction of the muscles in the throat to get the epiglottis to vibrate. If you find you need to cough or clear your throat or blow your nose, let me know and I'll bring you a Kleenex. Don't feel self-conscious. This is your practice. Doesn't matter what anyone else is doing or how anyone else is feeling. This is about you this morning. Skin. Imagine the skin sliding down your back. As you experiment with Ujjayi, take it back into complete breath. So we're layering Dirga Pranayama and Ujjayi Pranayama. Complete breath and the ocean breath. On the inhalation, imagine the ribs moving out towards the inner arms. On the exhalation, imagine getting taller, creating more space between each vertebra and the spine. Arms are relaxed by the sides. 
breathing. Even as you become very active, we're staying soft. Notice if you're holding your belly rigid. Soften the belly, get taller. And we'll allow the breath to return to its natural rhythm. As the breath comes back to its natural rhythm, we'll take a moment and we'll open our eyes downward and bring our hands into Hakini Mudra. It's a mudra of manifestation. We bring all the fingertips together and then drop the hands down in front of where they land naturally. And we look down through the triangles created by the gesture and we drop our intention into this gesture on the route to manifesting that which you desire in this day. For yourself, for another, microcosm, I want to feel stronger. Macrocosm, I want to be part of the strength of my community. And this, the word that it distills down to still is strength. See if you can find a single word that represents your intention this morning. And when you're ready, bringing that intention into practice, opening the palms up in a gesture of begging this morning. That's it. And then inhale, bring those hands up, look up. And exhale, hands down, stand tall. That's it. Inhale, hands up, looking up to the thumbs. Exhale, hands down. Stand as tall as you can each time. One more time. Inhale, hands up. And at this time, we're going to bring the hands down by the sides, bend the knees deeply, bring the hands to the front of the knees, and let's flex the spine back and forth. Spinal flexion. Oh, from tailbone to crown of the head. And if your spine or your hips or your back is stiff this morning, really flex the spine until you start to melt the fuzz, start to melt the tension in the back body. Two more times, back and forth. And on the next breath, as you flex the spine in, look up. Exhale to fold the abdomen over the front of the thighs. Release the head and shoulders downward. Tuck the chin in and look down the nose to the groin. Hold here for a moment, chin down, chin down, chin right into your chest, that's it. And walk the hands over to the right side. Knees are bent, that's it. And chin is tucked in. On your breath, walk back to center and on an exhalation over to the other side. Knees are bent deeply so your hands can be on the floor. So your knees are bent so deep, down here, not trying to force the hamstrings in any way. And bring it back to center. As you come back to center, inhale to pike, flexing the spine in the opposite direction, coming maybe halfway up if you need to, and exhale to fold deeper. Bend the knees if they got legs got straight, step back into plank. Hold here for a moment. And we're gonna roll forward and back on from the balls of the feet to the tips of the toes. And try to keep your bum down so it's a nice long straight line from your heels to your shoulders. And you're just rolling forward onto your tips of your toes, right onto the very tops of your toes. And rolling back to the balls of your feet, forward and back. And then one more time, forward and back, really opening up the toe bed, like hello toes, right? Drop to the knees, relax the toes, stretch back into resting child. Sit back to the heels, extend the arms, Forehead comes towards the floor, forearms are off the floor, arms are fully extended, and we want to reach out through the fingertips. And on the next breath, hands are shoulder width apart. Inhale, lift the head and shoulders before you come up. Just lift and feel a sense of stretching from pubic bone to chin, and then bring it forward to table. Curl the toes under, press back into the toe bed and really open up the toe bed one more time so they're not shocked when you get up into downward dog. You want to really feel a sense of lifting the hips now and into downward dog. Adho Mukha Shavanasana. Drop the head, relax. Tailbone reaches high. Bend the knees deeply so you can get your hips high. That's it, that's it Zaza, awesome. And imagine the inner thighs rotating externally up and out. Pelvic tilt is forward and down to release so you don't ever jam your SI joint. Fingers are open wide, index fingers are pointing straight ahead, thumb and first finger firmly rooted in the ground. When you've taken five breaths, or when you think it's about five breaths, 
Walk the feet forward between the hands. Just bend the knees as we come forward. Whatever you need to do to bring the feet between the hands. Exhale, chin down, look down. Inhale, pike again. Flex the spine and the uh, open your chest right up. Hands on the front of your shin. Just hold this until everyone gets it. That's it, open the chest up. Chin, so no wrinkles in the neck. Open the chest up. Imagine there's a yardstick stuck in the back of your trousers and you need to bring your back up to find the yardstick. Come on, keep coming up. There it is, that's it. Open your chest more. Roll. Yes, and exhale to fold. Inhale, find that same sense of openness and use it to lead you up to standing. Inhale, hands up, and exhale the hands down by the side. Stand tall, find your smile. It's a good day. Inhale, hands up, round two, Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, fold from the hip joint. If you have SI joint or back issues, bend the knees deeply again. Inhale to pike. Exhale to fold. Inhale, step back into your plank position. Lower slowly down and pause just above the ground. If you don't have the strength to hold it, drop to your knees and hold it. When you're ready, melt down into the ground, all the way, forehead to the ground. And when you're ready, lower body is firmly rooting into the ground. Fingers are open wide. Inhale, lift with just the strength of the back first. Small cobra, bhujangasana. Right? And when you're ready, lift the chest, lift the hips, and take it back into downward dog. When you get to downward dog, make any adjustments that you need to. So you can imagine being folded over a clothesline at the hip joint, and you want to let the spine fall down, let the legs fall down, so it's a little less effort. Notice if you're rolling into the outside edge of your wrist, and firmly root the thumb and first finger into the floor. That's it. Notice what happens at the end of the exhalation in the low abdomen. And exaggerate that sensation. Nice deep contraction in the low abdomen, drawing the internal organs up into the chest cavity. And on the next breath, when you've taken five breaths, try stepping the feet forward. Step the right foot between the hands, and it might take two or three steps in the beginning and step the left foot. Forward fold, bend your knees if you need to. Inhale to pike. Exhale to fold. Open your chest, open up, open up, open up. Hips, knees bent if you need to, so you can get that sense in there. And we're gonna hang out with the pike one more time again. That's it. Come up and find my arm again. Open your chest, bend your knees. Tip your pelvis up and back towards, yes, more. Come up, come up and find my hand. Yes. Exhale to fold. Inhale, all the way up to standing. Sweep your arms open wide, find that openness in the chest. Exhale, hands down by your side and stand really tall. Take up some space, that's it. Getting tall. Notice if you have issues around taking up some space on this planet. You came here for a reason. Take up some space, take a bigger breath, that's it. Third round, see if you can do this with a little less instruction from me. I'll say a few things. Inhale, hands up when you're ready to inhale, hands up. On your breath, fold. On your breath, pike. Find the openness in your chest. That's it, open up, Zaza, open up, look up. Exhale, take it back into plank. And a lower halfway down. This time, let's roll onto the front of the feet and into upward facing dog. If you don't have the strength to maintain upward facing dog, drop to your knees and then bring the hips to the floor for cobra, bhujangasana. When you've taken uh, one more breath here, come curl the toes under, lift the chest up and into downward facing dog. Become aware of where your hands are. Firmly root the hands in the ground. Right, if we roll into the outside edge of the wrist, one or two times is not a big deal, but doing it over and over and over, you're gonna wonder why there's a crushing sensation in your wrist and there's nerve issues. So let's put this firmly on the ground. That's it, yep. Breathing. When you've held for five breaths, I'll know you're done. When you walk, step, or experiment with hopping the feet forward between the hands. Exhale into forward fold. Inhale to pike. Exhale to fold. 
Inhale, sweep the arms open wide, find a straight back and come all the way up. Exhale, hands down by your side, stand tall. Close your eyes for a moment and notice where you feel warm, where you feel cool, what feels stimulated and what feels calm. That's it. And in a moment, if you know Surinamaskar B, imagine it in the mind's eye. And if this is a new practice for you, I'll be explaining it step by step. It's similar to A, but B is we add the warriors and Utkatasana, the small squat. When you're ready, inhale, hands up. Exhale, take a seat into a small squat. Sweep the arms down, bring them out in front. And again, classic pose, the arms are way up. I feel like for the average woman's shoulder, we need our arms need to be a little bit lower so we don't close in at the brachial artery and get the numbness and tingling in the fingers. On the breath, exhale, hinge forward. If you need to, keep your knees bent. On your breath, inhale to pike. Exhale to fold. Take it back into the plank. Chaturanga. Lower down slowly, roll on to the front of the feet. Inhale into upward dog or cobra. Listen to your body, into downward dog. When we get to downward dog, we bring the left foot and we turn it onto a slight angle. And we're just gonna step forward with the right foot between the hands. And on the next inhalation, we'll sweep the hands up and come into Virabhadrasana one. Now, if you find you're a little tippy, bringing the feet closer to each other and making a smaller stance will feel more steady. If you notice if you're rolling in on the back heel, press down on both edges of the foot. So you equalize and stabilize. And then drop on the kneecap to make a strong leg without hyperextension. The front knee is tracking right over the center of the foot. On the breath, straighten the front leg, drop the arms down, hinge forward from the hip joint, into forward fold over the front leg, into runner stretch. When you're ready, bend the right knee step back with the right foot and lower down slowly. This is where we say vinyasa, and it means putting together a couple of vinyasas. Each pose is a vinyasa of its own. We put them together, it's still. Vinyasa is singular and plural. When you're ready, take the left foot forward between the hands. Inhale, step the left foot forward, coming on up. All right, breathe. I need to take a diaphragmatical breath. <sighs> go. When you feel ready, straighten the front leg. Exhale, hinge forward over the front leg and step back into plank. Step back. That's it. When you're ready, lower down. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. And we hold down dog for five breaths. If you've got sciatic issues, if this is a new practice for you and you need to take a break, it's perfectly fine to come into and hold your back bend. If you're holding a back bend, the toes are never curled under because it force puts the force in your lumbar spine. But if back bend's not working and you're getting tired, you can always come to resting child. When you've taken five breaths, walk, step, or hop the feet forward to the top of the mat. And to forward fold. Exhaling into forward fold. Inhale to pike. Exhale to fold. Look down. Inhale, sweep the arms open and come into Utkatasana, the small squat pose again. Look up, the gaze is on the thumbs. One eye on each thumb, not physically possible, but the effort to do it strengthens the gaze. On the next breath, inhale, coming all the way up to standing and reach up into a small back bend. As if you're bending up and over a big sheaf of wheat. Anuvritasana, bring it back to standing. Tadasana, samastitihi, stand tall. Stand tall, feel that same height from the beginning of the practice. Round two, inhale, hands up. Exhale into Utkatasana. Gazing at the thumbs, on the breath, forward fold. Inhale to pike. Exhale to fold, turbo. Exhale to lower down, inhale up into a back bend. Exhale into downward dog. Right foot comes forward. Inhale, sweep the hands up, get steady. As soon as you feel steady in the pose, asana means the seat of the pose. As soon as you find the seat of the pose, straighten the front leg and keep moving. Step back. Vinyasa. And if you ever forget, look around and just hope they're not watching you to figure out what's going on. 
one. On the next breath, the left foot's going to come forward when you feel ready. Inhale, come up, get steady, shoulders back and down. Notice if you're striving, soften up a little, soften up. Fold when you're ready, melt over the front leg, hips are square to the top of the mat. Step back into plank, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. And left foot comes forward. Right. Did we do both already? We did both already. Awesome. And holding for five breaths. Inhale, nice and slow. Exhale, completely. Firmly in the Yes, that's it. Good job. When you've taken five breaths, walk, step, or hop. The hop forward has got the energy of handstand. So contemplate handstand and let your feet float forward between your hands or just walk them there. Inhale, piking. Exhale, folding. Inhale into Utkatasana. Hold Utkatasana, gazing at the thumbs. Shoulders back and down. Hips, knees, and ankles in alignment. Notice if you have a tendency for the knees to wing open. If you need a block between the knees, this is a good tool to help you to start to identify the muscles of Utkatasana. When you've taken five breaths here, we're gonna inhale all the way up into back bend. And hold back bend for a breath or two. The sequence is biased towards our forward folds and downward dogs. Back bends are a good counter pose. When you've taken one more breath, bring it back. Hands come down and stand tall. Inhale, hands up. Exhale into Utkatasana. Looking at the thumbs, exhale, forward fold. Gaze comes down the nose to the groin. Inhale to pike, gaze to the center of the forehead. Exhale down, look down the nose, step back into plank, gaze to the floor. Chaturanga, gaze comes to the center of the forehead. Follow a plumb line up, look up. Exhale, downward dog, look down the nose to the groin. Right, follow the big toe, right foot comes forward. Follow a plumb line to the horizon. You can look at Walden too today. He's leaving, we can say goodbye to Walden today. Exhale, forward fold, nose comes to the knee. And inhale, step back, to the, gaze to the floor. Up dog, look up to the center of the forehead. Down dog, look down the nose to the groin. Left foot comes forward, follow, follow the big toe between the hands and then follow the plumb line from there all the way up to the horizon. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, step back. Exhale to lower down, vinyasa. We're taking five breaths in downward dog. And again, if you know downward dog is not your pose this morning, take care of you, listen to your body. Notice if you're locking your elbows in your transition, keep them like nice, good shock absorbers with a little bit of a spring to them. We're not locking them in place. And it doesn't have to be a static pose. Bend the knees, play with the hips, play with the soles of the feet, play with your shoulders. How can my shoulders move in this pose? Can I let go of any holding, the conscious, and delve in and look for the unconscious holding? When you've taken five breaths, I will know that you're done when you make it back to the top of the mat. Exhale into forward fold. Inhale the pike. Exhale to fold. Inhale into Utkatasana. Take a breath, gazing at the thumbs. That's it. And on the next breath, inhale all the way up into back bend. Hold back bend for a breath. And when you're ready, bring it back to standing. Stand tall, stand very tall. That was round two, right? We got one more round of Surnamaskar B this morning. In our intro to Ashtanga, in our modified sequences, we do 3A and 3B. When you're ready, inhale, hands up. Exhale back to Utkatasana gazing at the thumbs. Want to work a little harder, sit a little deeper. On your breath, forward fold. Really hold on to your ankles and draw your forehead to your knees. Inhale, piking, look up, stretch. Exhale, folding, you're getting warm now. Take it back into plank. Make it a little more challenging, right? Pause just before you roll into your next posture. Inhale, up dog, roll back to plank and push up into downward dog. Use your arms, that's it. X holding left foot, sorry, right foot comes forward. That's it. 
Get steady. Here I am, it's me, yeah. Victorious warrior, forward fold. Back to battle, step back, battle with the self. Lower down, inhale up dog, exhale down dog. From down dog, the left foot's gonna come forward. Take your time, find your smile, it's a good day. That's it. Left foot comes forward, inhale coming up. Get steady, square the hips to the top of the mat. Bring the back toes in just a little bit this way, yeah. And widen the stance a little, that's it. Like right now, I'm seeing it here. This pose is here and the heel is firmly in the ground, so it's gonna take, might have to make a smaller stance, you got it. And then forward fold. Yes, yes, here we go. And plank, that's it, at your own pace. Listen to your body, you're doing great this morning. That's it, bring the hands a little closer together too, Steph, there you go, magical. Breathe in, hands firmly rooted. Just uh, try stepping back about six inches. Step back a little, like your feet back a little. You bring your big, big toes to about here. Yeah, on both sides, yeah. There you go. And yes, lengthen out more through the side body. You got it. When you've taken five breaths, I will know that you are done. When you bring the feet back between the hands. Exhale, piking on the breath, folding. Inhale into Utkatasana. Exhale, holding. Inhale up into back bend. Exhale, holding. Inhale back to standing. Exhale, hands down. Stand tall. Notice your breath. Now, if any poses become challenging, I mean, that vinyasa becomes challenging between postures, come back to ujjayi like we began. Oftentimes, people will find that it'll kind of support the pose by just digging in and breathing a little bit deeper. All right, when you're ready, inhale, hands up. Exhale, forward fold. First two fingers, <laughs> grab a hold of the big toes. Holding the big toes, draw the big toes towards us and gently press down with the toe. So there's an opposing action at the toe joint and we're going deeper into our stretch now. If it's okay, I may come around and gently touch a back or two just to release tension. If you don't want to be touched, I trust you to let me know. Every day is a different day, so feel free to tell me to get lost and let go, let go, let go, let go. That's it, just releasing downward. When you've taken five breaths holding the big toes, we'll release the big toes, inhale to pike, and exhale to fold deeper. And we'll take the hands underneath the soles of the feet, tuck the toes into the palms of the hands. Any hand issues, just wrap your hands around the back of your ankles, just like Jess was about to do there. And again, opposing action. Draw up with the hands, press down with the feet, and go into your deepest stretch, 90, 95% of your range of motion. When we go to 100%, we get the stretch response. The muscles tense up and don't wanna let go. We go to 90, 95%, we get a relaxation response. The muscles release and let us go deeper into our pose. Use your breath. And when you notice that the muscles have relaxed, go deeper. When you've taken five breaths here, release the hands, inhale to pike and vinyasa. Take it back into plank. Notice if you're hyperextending at the knee joint, always keep your joints supported. Inhale up dog, exhale down dog. You're doing great. That's it. Holding for five breaths. An intro to Ashtanga, one of the things that we try to stress too is that let go of any sense of competition. We don't worry about what anyone else is doing. We just get on our mat. That's it, firmly, a bit of a space in here. Yes, see how it went into both sides there? And when you've taken five breaths, I'll know you're done when you bring the right foot forward between the hands. Inhale, coming up into warrior one. And on the next breath, we're gonna open up and face the inside wall. And we get to say goodbye to like the Dior inspired mother nature over here today as we face the inside wall. So we're coming from warrior one to warrior two and opening up the stance a little bit. And this time now the hips are open and they're facing this wall. 
Now, if this knee in the front is pulling in, it means the foot is open too far in the back. So if I bring my toes in towards the midline, then it's much easier to keep the knee tracking over the ankle in the front. Arms open up wide, shoulders relax. That's it. And there's often a tendency for one arm to drop more than the other, so we equalize the two arms, relax the shoulders. Center of the sternum is right over top of the pubic bone. Right. We turn the palm of your lead hand up. We turn and look into the palm of the hand. So the dristi point or the gaze point is the palm of the hand through the middle finger. Holding and breathing, go a little deeper. Virabhadrasana two. On the next breath, we're gonna come into side angle pose. It's gonna rotate through the core and the back of the right arm, it presses against the inside of the left leg. And if it's possible, we turn and look into the palm of the right hand. If you find it strains your neck, look to the side of the room or look to the floor if you want a different stretch. But when you've taken five breaths, we'll know you're done when you bring the arm over the ear, stretch from heel to fingertips. And then the right hand will, so your left hand will come to the ground and your right hand will come up to the ceiling. Rotate onto your toes on the back foot. Rotate onto the toes in the back foot. Come up onto your toes in the back foot. We send the back heel back, front hip forward, and feel the twist in the spine. So either on the palm of the hand or up on the pads of the fingers. If you find this is too intense, try not to over direct the shoulder either. So you wanna be able to see the palm of your hand when you look up, that's it. And shoulders, while well, they can go in, they can circumduct completely. When we're twisting, we only gonna go as far as the twist can go, not to take the shoulder further, because we create instability in the shoulder joint. When you're ready, when you've taken five breaths, drop the right hand down, step back into a plank, and vinyasa. Inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. And holding down dog for five breaths. When you've held for five breaths, I'll know you're done. When we bring the left foot forward between the hands. It's amazing how long those five breaths are now. We need a break. And inhale coming up, Virabhadrasana one. Opening up to the outside wall, Virabhadrasana two. As we open up to the outside wall, sometimes it's nice to oh, widen the stance just a little bit and hips are open. If we can't keep the knee on top of the ankle, even with the adjustment of the foot, usually means we need a slightly narrower stance. Hands are up, shoulders are back and down. Less effort in the shoulders, gently reaching out through the fingertips and turn the palm of the lead hand up and we look through the palm of the hand. Breathing, maybe go a little bit deeper. That's it, oh, does that feel good to anybody else this morning, right? On the next breath, rotate through the core and press the inner arm against the inner leg, the outer arm and inner leg together, turning and looking at the palm of your right hand, my left hand, your right hand. Hips open, chest open. See if you can get taller in the pose, that's it. Strong legs. When you've taken five breaths, take the right arm over the ear. That's it, lengthen, reach out from fingertips to toes, and then drop the right hand to the floor, onto your toes in the back, and take the left hand up to the ceiling. Imagine pressing the inner thighs together even as the hips separate sagittally. And try to be on the palm of the hand or up on the pads of the fingers, that's it. Breathing and holding. If you need a block to feel more comfortable here, let me know, I'm happy to bring you a block. Notice if you're over-directing the shoulder again. Try not to go past the shoulder joint itself. And just about two or three, yeah, right there. Feel where the shoulders are. Hang out there for just a second, Zaza. Bring your hand to my head. Relax, think about this as the openness. Feel the difference? Cool. And drop down in vinyasa. Inhale up dog, exhale down dog. And when you've taken five breaths in downward dog, I'll know you're done. When you come back to the top of the mat 
and we'll prepare for a balancing sequence. I'll bring around some straps. We know that uh, you have trouble reaching your foot, better to use a strap. Right. Or hold behind the knee if you don't want to use a strap. That's it. Coming back to the top of the mat. Inhale, piking, exhale, folding. Inhale, coming back up to standing. Stand tall, shoulders back and down. And find a focal point on the horizon or six to 10 feet ahead on the floor. And bring the hands up for balance at the sides. If you know you have any trouble with balance, feel free to get close to a wall or a post so that you can hold on to a wall if you need to. I can always bring my shoulder around if you don't have a wall. And as you keep your eyes on your focal point, the breath steady, arms up, shift the weight onto your right foot, my left foot. Let's do the left leg first. And we're gonna bring the left foot on top of the right foot. And first just really draw up through the supporting side of the body. Also there's a tendency to kind of collapse as soon as we go onto one foot. And we wanna engage the whole body through the core, through the leg, shoulders are engaged. And on the next breath, bring the knee up as high as you can comfortably. Either hold behind the knee. If you can reach, you can take a hold of the big toe with the first two fingers. Right? And you can either keep your hand wide or on a hip. If it's comfortable, we extend the leg out and draw up with the arm as you press down with the leg. If you can't reach your foot or the knee, you can have a hand behind the knee, under, under the knee works best. Because then you can press your knee down as you draw up with your hand. So you still get the two opposing actions. When you've taken five breaths, take it out to the side. That's it. External hip rotation, breathing and holding. If you find balance is not there, all right, try your strap. Better to use the strap than to try and lean to go higher. It's not important how high we go. What's important is that we work on balance here. And balance where we're not straining. Trust me, if hard work is gonna make you better, I'm going to let you work hard. But if hard work is a strain that's causing instability, I'm going to suggest a modification. Then when you've taken five at the side, it's two hands around the sole of the foot or two hands behind the knee, right? or two hands around the strap. Breathe and hold, trying to stand up straight and tall. Imagine you have three legs, two legs on the floor, one leg extended. And see if you can square your hips as if you're standing on two legs. When you've taken five breaths holding two pieces, drop your strap and hold with the strength of the leg. That's it. The leg might be fully extended or you might just have your knee bent. And we're holding with a, without any assistance. It might be down here somewhere. That's okay. Notice if you're leaning or back or forward, try to stay up tall. When you've taken five breaths, the feet come back together under the hips. And first, just take a moment to feel the two sides. So what's a great pose when you're feeling scattered and unsteady in life, right? Feel how, how rooted one side of the body is right now. When you're ready to inhale, inhale, hands up, look up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to pike, exhale to fold. Take it back in a plank, chaturanga. Inhale up dog, exhale down dog. Hold for five breaths and then we'll walk step or hop the feet forward between the hands again, preparing to do the other side. You're doing great. Thumbs and first fingers firmly rooted in the ground. Imagine pressing your hands apart. They don't go anywhere, but the energy of pressing them apart is the energy of downward dog in the upper body and the shoulder girdle. Helps you to engage the muscles of the arms. When you've taken five breaths, bring it back to the top of the mat. Inhale, piking, exhale, folding. Inhale, coming back up to standing. Find a focal point. Bring the hands up for balance. Shift the weight onto the other foot. Get tall. Bring the knee up. Maybe grab a hold of your big toe if you can reach it, or just hold behind the knee. Press down with the leg as we draw up with the arm. Hold and breathe. Maybe use your strap if you need to. Try not to lean back. Keep your shoulders right on top of the hips. You're doing great. 
When you've taken five breaths at the front and variation one, take it outside to the side, variation two, external hip rotation. You got it. Yeah. A good yoga is knowing when to listen to your body and support it. It's not about getting to where your neighbor is. Right? We never know. We're all a little bit different. And when you've taken five breaths at the side, bring it back to center. Two hands around the sole of the foot or two hands around your strap or your knee. Breathe and hold. That's it. That's it. When you've taken five breaths, then holding with the strength of the leg. Breathe and hold. Try not to lean back to get the leg higher. Better to lower the leg and maintain neutral pelvis, neutral spine. When you've taken five breaths or you feel fed up with it, bring your feet back together. Stand tall for a moment. Feel the two sides and then vinyasa. Inhale and exhale. You're doing great. Hiking and folding. Planking. Drop to your knees if you're getting tired. All right? Make it a three-legged plank if you're feeling energized this morning. Notice how the practice is without music. Is it different? Are you working harder? Or are you feeling like it just feels like forever? The next song is not coming yet. So just notice what it brings up for you. Keep the hips square if you're doing those, right? Yes. Then you can turn it consciously, but don't just let it wing out. All right? When you've taken five breaths, I'll know you're done. When you bring the feet back between the, sorry, actually let's drop to the knees, relax the toes, cross the ankles, sit back across the ankles, and come into seated pose. Bring the legs out front. Um, classic Ashtanga starts with a double leg forward fold and uh, so I always preface the fact that we're going to do a single leg forward fold, especially when we have a large beginner group. So we're going to bend the right knee out to the side, bring the sole of the right foot into the groin and we want to bring it as close to the crease of the hip as you can comfortably and we want to press the sole of the foot and the leg together firmly. Unless you have unmedicated high blood pressure, you're pregnant because it um, we'll explain it later, but if uh, you do not want to press them together because they're acupressure points for uterus and that sort of thing and the inner thigh. Toes up on the extended leg, strong leg. This leg is almost trying to get off the floor, it's so strong. Activated quadriceps, move the flesh from the sit bones if you need to so you can really feel your bones moving down to the ground. Inhale the hands up. Now if you have a tight, tight, tight hamstrings, you can put your hands here and just lean forward. Otherwise, you can bring your hands forward. Come as far as you can, maybe holding onto the calf or the sole of the foot and bring the forehead towards the knee or the shin. And tuck your chin right in at the very end of the exhalation. On the next breath, inhale, look up, look to your big toe. And exhale, tuck your chin in and reach again and deep stretch. Notice what happens at the end of your exhalation again. Exaggerate that. This is where we can do maha bandha, all three bandhas. Inhale, look up. Exhale, fold deeper. Yudhyana bandha, sorry, mula bandha, Yudhyana bandha, Jaladahara bandha. We've got three locks in the body, the pelvic diaphragm, abdominal diaphragm, and the throat diaphragm. When you've taken five breaths, inhale, looking up. Point the toes away from you on this extended foot. All right, and bring a hand behind the bent knee hip. Come up onto the hand and the knee and reach up and over into half circle. Gate pose. Ah, that's it, lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Anybody else hear that gate mantra? When you, when you, when you come in here, gate. Gate, paragate, parasamgate, gone, gone, gone beyond gone. And when you've taken five breaths, lower the arm across the chest, drop back to your seat, cross at the ankles, rock forwards, and hop back into plank or step back into plank position. Chaturanga, Urdhvar Mukha Shivanasana, Adho Mukha Shivanasana, hold for five breaths. Feel the difference in the two sides after a nice deep single leg forward fold. Can you feel that, guys? What do you feel? Does it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
If you can't, don't feel attached to it, but it's just observing how the body changes pose by pose. When you've taken five breaths, back up onto the toes and either hop forward into seated pose or the same thing we just did, drop to the knees, cross the ankles and sit back into seated pose. Left leg extended, sorry, right leg extended, left foot into the groin. Toes up, press the sole of the foot and the inner thigh together unless you have any issues that would suggest not doing that. And toes up on your extended leg, strong, strong, strong leg. Inhale the hands up, keep the set of the shoulders, come forward from the hips, and whatever you can reach, draw it towards you and tuck the chin in. Then play with the banda. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, feel free to ask me and I'll come around and assist you. Inhale, looking up, lengthening. Exhale, go deeper. Inhale, look up, lengthen. Exhale, go deeper at your own pace. Maybe you just wanna hold it steady for three or four breaths. When you've taken at least five breaths, we'll inhale and come up into gate pose. Listen to your back. If your neck is bothering you, a nice thing you can do here is just the little nod, the nutation of the skull. Start to decompress the AO joint and it helps to reteach the trapezius muscles that it would be okay to relax. When they've been traumatized, anything can make them tighten up again on you. When you've taken five breaths, inhale coming up into gate pose. Hand behind the hip, point the toes up onto the bent knee and hold for five breaths. Lengthen, get long, get tall, reach. Gate, gate, paragate, parasamgate, lengthen, get strong and long. When you've taken five breaths, lower the arm across the chest, lower the seat back down, cross at the ankles, and hop back into plank position. There we go, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. Hold for five breaths. If you're starting to fatigue, listen to your body. When you've taken five breaths, oh no, you're done. When you find your way back to seated. Yeah, if your shoulder's bugging you, take a break. Don't, don't force anything, right? Now, this time we're gonna come into the bind and we're gonna bend the right knee, place the right foot on the floor. Inhale the right hand up. Exhale, come forward, bring the right arm around the knee and the hands linked together behind the back. You may need a strap. Danny's got it going on there with the strap. And this is about the decompression. It's a bind. We want to decompress the shoulder joint, right? Lots of vinyasas, lots of compression of the shoulders. So this knee is up to the ceiling. This hand goes up to the ceiling. Reach up. Come forward inside your knee. Bring it around the back of your knee. Bring this arm around the back. Yeah, keep this in front. This hand comes around your back. And one day they come together, right? Yep, so the shoulder's gotta be on this side of your knee. That's it, you got it, that's it. When you've held for five breaths, release it and vinyasa. This time we won't hold downward dog. We'll come straight to seated and do the other side. But let's put a quick vinyasa in between these two sides. And we bend the other knee, reach up, come around, and bind. One side might work better than the other, so don't be attached to this side being exactly the same. That's it. So take this hand up to the ceiling, reach forward, come around, and there they are. Nice long arms. Right, some of us just have, my short arms can do this. Sometimes. Do you have a strap there? Yeah, but I am all confused. You got it right. That's it. This hand to the inside of your knee, around the outside, and this hand around the back. That's it. And you think decompress the shoulder. 
And decompress doesn't mean like sh separate your shoulder. Like sometimes we can be very forceful in our yoga postures. This is not meant to be forceful. It's meant to be like, how can I let go of the compression that happens? So there's a lot of downward dogs, planking, everything's compressing the shoulder. Now you get a pose where you can decompress. It's not about how long are my arms. Use a strap. You can still decompress with a strap, right? When you've taken five breaths, release it. And vinyasa. You're doing great, guys. You're doing great. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. When you've taken five breaths there, we're gonna come back to seated. And let's practice Navasana this morning. Navasana is the boat pose. Finding the spot on the tailbone or the sacrum where you can balance. And we're sitting in a V-sit. It's like a V-sit. Hands are parallel to the thighs, thumbs are up. And the gaze is on the big toes. If you find you can't maintain this pose for five breaths, you can put one foot on the floor for a couple of breaths, change legs, put the other foot on the floor. Shoulders are back and down, chest is lifted and open. All right, and so if the strength is not there, modify it or hold on to the back of your legs. If you know you have neck issues, hold on to the back of your legs. Awesome modification. And we're gonna stay for an additional five breaths. Yeah, so you can go all the way to the floor and all the way back up five times or you can just hang out here for five breaths. We got a little fall lethargy. There are too many apple pies in life this week. A couple of like, uh, isn't it starting to feel like time for stew? Even though it's warm out, I'm already wanting like butternut squash and carrots, right? It's time. Find your smile, it's a good day. That's it. Hard work's okay. Notice if you have a tendency to like, okay, it's getting hard, I don't wanna do this. Right, that's, we, the practice burns away that feeling. Gradually, we just practice because it's time to practice. Vinyasa, when you're done those five breaths. Vinyasa, here we go. Yeah, smiling, it's a good day. You're almost there, you're like more than three quarters of the way through. More than three quarters, we're almost done. Coming into the final home stretch. We are, we are, we are. This time we're gonna come down onto our back as we finish our five breaths. Find your way to your back. Knees bent, feet on the floor, arms down by the sides. Oh, good morning. Oh, hello, body. Right? Okay, you know, I was listening to a podcast and someone said, well, that Shraith, Patebi Joyce's son, the guy we don't want to talk about anymore, well, his son, Shraith, he says that this is not really Shavasana, this is resting. When you lie down, it's just resting. Shavasana comes after six series where you stop your heartbeat. I'll let you know when I get there. It's not yet, haven't got there yet. Bend the knees, feet on the floor. Inhale, lift the hips up off the floor, roll the shoulders back and down, bring the hands together and press the arms down into the ground, into Satubandhasana. Lift the hips, think about your shoulders. This is the architecture shoulders, right? Breathe, it's okay if I touch? Right, so I'm not gonna do this to correct you more, just to make it feel good. That's it, sense of lengthening coming up. Think about these going down in the floor, that's it. This one's like your homework every day. After sitting at your desk every day, do this before you go to sleep at night just to keep all of this open, right? <sighs> Think about knees straight ahead, equal weight on the inside and outside edges of the feet. Breathing, when you've taken five breaths, unfold the hands, unfold the shoulders, lower down slowly, and bring the knees into the chest. Hug the knees into the chest. Rock a little bit side to side. Circle around to the right. And then rock forward and back, and see if you can rock all the way up to standing. All the way up to standing, that's it. Rock up. Yes, yeah, it's like, oh, I was getting into the relaxed part, not yet. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, forward fold. Vinyasa, piking and folding and taking it back into plank. Lower down slowly, control. So let's feel like, hey body, I still got control after a whole hour of this. Inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. And let's come straight back down to the back. That's it, straight back down to the back. As we get to the back this time, we're gonna come into legs up pose. And that's, if you've got really tight hamstrings and it's uncomfortable to just try, 
and hold your legs up. And I, when I mean, when I say uncomfortable, there's a difference between hard work of holding a chaturanga and straining your back muscles in legs up. So when, when we can't keep our legs steady above the hip line, better to have a block underneath the pelvis so that we're not straining the back. As we get stronger and more flexible, then we can do different things, right? When you've taken five breaths in legs up pose, we're coming into shoulder stand. If, if, you, on your, if it's your moon time, or if it's um, any reason why you should not be doing shoulder stand, please just stay in legs up pose today, right? Listen to your body. If you know you have neck injuries, better to do modified shoulder stand with a block, then you're never straining anything in the neck. But there's lots of controversy around this posture. So any pinching sensations, anything that doesn't feel right, don't do it. Listen to your body. It knows what's okay for you. Right? And the gaze is on the big toes. When you've taken five breaths, the feet come overhead to plow. If you're um, in legs up with a block, tuck your knees into your chest and continue to hold the same pose. That's it, we're gonna to continue to hold the same pose. We're in and it's a mild inversion just to have your legs up. Just to be in this pose, you're still getting lots of the benefits of being inverted. And again, the classic form, the theory is one third of the class is this series of inversions, the finishing poses and Shavasana. And in the West, we tend to shorten all of this last part and spend more time on the muscle conditioning and the stretching rather than being inverted and resting. Most of us don't like to rest too long. We have like five minute Shavasanas and we're out of there. We wanna be done. But the longer the Shavasana, the more the body, the mind, the neural pathways are able to integrate the work. Strength doesn't necessarily come from the muscle. It's coming from your brain, right? So the brain needs time to integrate what you've just taught it, what you've asked it to do. When you've taken five breaths in plow, knees to ears for five breaths, if you've done that already, one breath in each pose coming out and either walk over or roll down slowly and we'll come back to bridge pose once again. That's it, listen to your body, modify as necessary. That's it. When you come back to bridge, holding bridge or full back arch if it's in your practice for five breaths. You're doing great. That's it. Listen to your body. Even if something's regularly in your practice doesn't mean that the body has access to it today. Some days we're stronger. This might be the day when you feel strong enough to come to a new pose. Might be the day when you modify something you do every single day. Let each day be its own unique practice. When you've taken five breaths, finding your way back, and one more vinyasa, take your time. That's it, Mary, Mary and two. So next time when you're doing that one, you wanted to come up onto your pads of your fingers again. So right on the palms of the hands, right? right? Or we can try blocks with a wall until you get there. Okay, vinyasa, that's it. It just says it'll strain the ligaments of your hands. When you've taken five breaths, we're gonna come back to the back and guess what time it is? It is time for some deep twists. Time to integrate some of the work we've done today. And let's approach the deep twist as a, an opportunity for a deep breathing exercise. So come on to the back, knees into the chest, roll to the right side. As you get to the right side, open the arms up wide into a T position. But only once your hips and knees have landed. And we open up. And we'll take 10 of the deepest, fullest breaths that you can take. When you've taken 10 of the deepest, fullest breaths you can take on this side, bring it back to center. Pause for a breath. Thank you. That's it, bringing left hand over to right side, one hand on each knee, roll it back to center. Roll to the other side when you're ready, no hurry. This is your practice, your breaths, your pace, and then opening up on the other side. If the shoulders don't hit the floor, it might be a good idea 
to bend the arm at the elbow joint and place the hand on the ribs so that we don't overstretch the shoulder joint. That's it. I want to see if we can get the knees above the hip line if possible. Thank you. Heavy wrist, heavy elbow, heavy shoulders. Get the breath right to the bottom of the ribs. That's it. You're doing great. When you've taken 10 breaths, I'll know you're done. When you bring the right arm over to the left side, one hand on each knee, and bring it back to center. And it is time to relax completely. As you come back to center, stretch one leg out straight and the other leg. Let the arms relax by your sides. And it is time to relax and breathe and just be right here, right now. Nothing to do but breathe and relax. If you're not comfortable lying flat on the floor, just put up a hand and I'll bring you props to support you. Tapaha Om Satyam Om Tat Savitur Baranyam Bargo Dravasya Dimahi Dio Yonaha Racho Acknowledging all those who've come before us on the spiritual path, that we may be where we are on our path today. Acknowledging everyone in our lives that have to compromise in some way or support us in some way so that we can do this practice, so that we can live the life that we're meant to live. with a heart of gratitude. We come back to an awareness of the floor and the body, the body and the floor. Feeling the points of contact between the body and the floor. If you're still perspiring, right now begin to just massage the perspiration into the skin. So if your face still feels wet, your chest, your back, forearms, just massaging that perspiration into the body. That's it. Coming back to our intention, if you set one for your practice today. Noticing any interesting thoughts or insights that have come up for you. And begin to do whatever the body feels the need to do now. Stretch, roll around, and eventually we'll come on up to a seated posture together. No hurry, taking our time. 
coming on around. Let's take one more breath together. Looking up. Exhale the hands to our hearts into Anjali Mudra. And if you like, join me in chanting Om this morning. Taking a deep breath in. Oh. Shanti, may I go in peace. Namaste. Hope you feel good and I have an awesome, awesome day today. Look into all the eyes around you. There's no mistakes. Just trust that the people that you meet in your day are who you're meant to meet. Take time to get to know them. Thank you so much. You guys were awesome. Good work.